Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at Family First Canine to your family. Uh, we hope you enjoy this time, this, this holiday with your families and, and focus on what's really important. That being said, I want to talk about traveling with your pets and last minute changes. I know this has happened to me on more than one occasion. Plans change at the last minute. You go to hit the road, you call around and all the places at board are full. So then you say, hey, no problem, I'll take my dog with me for the simple fact that there should be a lot of pet friendly options out there. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. So instead of finding yourself between a rock and a hard place, we're going to talk about some of the options that are available when you travel. Stay tuned. So you loaded up your family and your four-legged companion and you're hitting the open road Griswold style. So we're going to talk about places to stay now uh, that are pet friendly. And my favorite choice, RV parks. I mean, come on, an RV and your pet, what more can you ask for? Typically, I prefer KOAs. Uh, they offer what they call Camp Canine, which means they have a little pet friendly dog park inside the facility, a lot of them do. It's fenced off. Some of them have them separated between small and large dogs. And they even have, you know, the typical way stations, water stations, the whole nine. So campgrounds are my favorite option because most of them are pet friendly. Even the national parks, very welcoming, very inviting. As long as your dog's on a leash, no longer than a six foot leash. Uh, they're wonderful at accommodating uh, places for you to stay with your pet. And you're getting to enjoy the outdoors and travel with your four-legged companion. So what could be better? RV parks is my number one go-to. Okay, so no RV, no problem. My number one go-to on the, on the road are La Quinta Inns. All but four locations in the chain are pet friendly. Now this used to be my go-to because it offered more, it offered more high-end amenities like Hilton properties and things that I was used to staying at back when I used to be in hotel management. So La Quinta was always my hotel choice. There's always a La Quinta property uh, in a tourist destination. However, until recently, uh, and, and this is where we kind of had a falling out, they started implementing pet fees. Used to, there was never any pet fees when you stayed at La Quinta Properties. Now, depending on the property, it could be anywhere between $20 to $40 and up. So call ahead and check. Still, if I'm on the road, they are my favorite because it does offer more amenities, kind of like a Hampton Inn, a Hilton, Embassy Suites, things like that. So I'm a hotel snob. I'm throwing that out there. Um, you can judge me if you want to, I'm fine with that because you'll realize as I start talking about other properties what my taste is. So I'm just putting this together because everybody has individual tastes on lodging, but my number one go-to is still La Quinta even with the pet fees because I like certain amenities and certain style properties. Okay, so my second choice, and this wasn't always the case, this has changed recently over the past couple years because I've had some wonderful experiences with this hotel chain, and that's Red Roof. Used to, I wouldn't give Red Roof in a second glance. A few years back, uh, I was traveling uh, with my wife at the time to, uh, to Iowa. Unfortunately, her grandmother passed, and the only place we could stay at was a Red Roof. And I was amazed from day, from day one. We ended up staying there three or four days, and it was a wonderful stay. When I walked in, uh, they were very inviting. They, they interacted with us. They asked questions about our pet. Uh, and then they told us that they even had a Facebook page dedicated uh, to pets, like Red Roof Loves Pets. So they have their own uh, Facebook page, and their slogan was this, if you stay happy, pets stay free. So they do a great job at making us feel at home with our four-legged companions. And I've stayed at three or four properties since then. Some of them are older, some of them are newer. All of them very clean, all of them very welcoming. The next hotel I want to talk about is Sleep In. Now, I promise I'm not being endorsed by any of these hotels, but why not let your dog sleep in and sleep in? That's their motto, and it's kind of a catchy little motto. The one thing I do like about a sleep in when you're traveling, their pet uh, policy is the same across the board. It's not like going to another chain where 30 miles down the road, they may charge $40 a night, and then you travel 10 miles, and they're only charging $20 a night, and then you get to North Carolina, and that hotel's letting them stay for free. So sleep in, their policy is the same across the board, 
And to me, that's a wonderful thing because it takes out the guesswork. Oftentimes, we don't we find ourselves in a rush. We don't have time to call ahead. Okay, the last hotel I'm going to mention, I'm not plugging it. This is not my preference. I, I, I haven't stayed at one of these in 20 plus years. However, I would be doing an injustice to you folks if I didn't mention it. And that's Motel 6. Because first off, Motel 6's are budget friendly. Um, they're conveniently located off every high, major highway in the United States. Uh, you can find them no matter where you're traveling. There are some nice ones out there, so I'm not going to say, hey man, never stay at a Motel 6. They're just not my first choice. They're not even my second or third choice. Uh, if I had to, I'd probably stay at one. But I'm not going to sit here and dog them out because pets are free at Motel 6. And when I was driving through Owensboro yesterday, I looked up on a sign. I'm like, hey, $39 a night. And I looked up on their website, and the pictures appear to be a nice, clean room. So, $39 a night, $50 a night. If they're clean, it's safe. That's all that really matters at the end of the day. Clean, safe, conveniently located to wherever you're traveling with your dog, whether it's family members or if it's a competition. So, Motel 6 is always a good choice to uh, look into. Okay, so let's say that you can't find a place to camp, or camp is maybe not your thing, and you can't find a hotel. Maybe you're going to a big dog event, or maybe you just don't want to stay with the in-laws. There's always one more choice, and that's Airbnb. Over the past couple of years, this site has, has gained more popularity. I've had some friends that have stayed at some wonderful locations uh, at some dog events, and I've got a cousin that actually makes money in Nashville renting her house out through Airbnb. So it's always a really good option. If you hit the road, check it out. Uh, I looked at one in Myrtle Beach, and it was right on the beach. It was pet friendly, and the prices were great. So uh, check out Airbnb. I really hope that this video helps some folks. Some of you probably knew most of this information, but I wanted to throw it out there because you'd be surprised about places that, that are pet friendly. Sometimes people ask, hey, what's pet friendly in the area? Uh, the most important thing is when you sit out, make sure you're prepared. Take a copy of your dog's uh, vaccination records. Uh, proof of rabies, make sure you know the dog has his collar on, you've got all forms of ID, make sure you've got plenty of water and food, take your dog's toys, pack the dog up, and remember, children in car seats, dogs in crates. We want a safe, happy travel uh, experience with our dogs and our family members. So let's hit the open road and let's have fun and I will see you folks next year.